What's up everybody? Martha Cross 316 back with another comic book flashback and today y'all we are looking at Tales to Astonish issue number 67. This issue was released in February of 1965 and the cover date was May of 1965 and today we are continuing the story here where the Incredible Hulk is in this uh, foreign land here. He's behind the Iron Curtain. He was captured as Bruce Banner. And then he broke loose as the Hulk. And so we are continuing here the story where the Hulk is definitely mad at all of these Reds because they are responsible for killing his friend, the scientist who had released and helped release the Bruce Banner from prison. And now Hulk is ready to go on one heck of a rampage here. So we got a lot of great stuff going here. But let's go ahead and give credit where credit is due. This issue is brought to you by Stan Lee, who wrote this issue. You have Steve Ditko on the artwork, Frank Ray on the inking, and Art Smek on the lettering page. And so let's go ahead and get started. Today's title is Where Strides the Behemoth. So Hulk sees these tanks coming towards his direction, and he is ready to go all out on his rampage here. And this guy says, it's true, the Hulk does exist, but not for long. We will blast him from the face of the earth. And so Hulk, as he recalls from what happened last issue, he says, they killed friend, killed man who helped Hulk. I make them pay. Thus, like a vengeful lumbering leviathan, the green-skinned powerhouse lunges right into the path of the heavily armed tanks. And this is where all of the great action starts taking place. I mean, the Hulk rips apart this one tank right here, picks up the tank, and he's ready to smash these guys to smithereens here. The other guy in the tanks are uh, alerted to this. He says, look, comrades, the Hulk must have an anti-tank gun. We must destroy him before he can use it against us. They throw you know, fire rockets at him one at a time. And it blasts Hulk right where he stands, but the, it doesn't stop the Hulk. What the Hulk does next is he's going to grab a hold of the road that these tanks are driving on. And this tank fires off, but it doesn't hit the Hulk. And so now Hulk, with his strength, has tore up this road here. And they're like, too late, the road is, the road raced up. We cannot aim at him. So Hulk... Um, jumps up in the air, lands on top of this tank, and destroys it. And he says, Men run, afraid, afraid of Hulk, but others still in tanks. Must get rid of them, too. Must smash all. So we see he's going to just continue to, on his rampage here. The guy says, We can't remain inside. He's tearing the tanks apart with his bare hands. Run! The others will get him as soon as their guns can get the range. And he says, the others are coming. They're surrounding him. He has no chance. So all four tanks are surrounding the Hulk here. But what does the Hulk do? He uses a thunderclap here. And it just demolishes these tanks, causing these men to flee for their lives. As the Hulk here says, run, run, run from the Hulk. Fight is over. Hulk has won. What does Hulk do next? Why am I here? And so, remember, Hulk does, definitely doesn't have the mind of Bruce Banner. He is more uh, immature in his thinking, and he doesn't understand why he is in this foreign land here, fighting as the Hulk. And so Hulk is going to leap away, and these guys are like, leave the Hulk away, leave him alone, let him go to Mongolia, and let him attack there. We don't want nothing to do with him. And so Hulk lands in Mongolia, and he then is going to go behind this rock, and he's like, home, where is home? This place good as any, no place good for Hulk, no place. And so he begins to think, and he thinks about Rick Jones and how he was a friend, but now Hulk has nothing. And as he begins to doze off, he then turns transforms back into Bruce Banner, and when Bruce Banner awakens, he is found with a gun right pointing right at his face. And this guy who 
is um, confronting him is Ganga Khan, and he is one of the leaders of Mongolia, and they're going to hold Bruce Banner captive here. And so they're like, hmm, we could use Bruce Banner as a prize, as a, a prize for ransom. We could get a lot of money out of him. We know how Americans are wealthy. And so Ganga Khan says, you need to guard him, and it'll mean your life if he escapes. And so now Bruce Banner is concerned here because if the report gets back to General Ross that he is now in Mongolia, then it's just going to add more fuel to the fire because uh, the Americans think that Bruce Banner defected and joined the Reds and joined, you know, behind the Iron Curtain. And so the report gets back to the military installation where General Ross is at, and he then calls General Talbot into the ring, Major Talbot, and he says, look, reports have been cited that Bruce Banner is in Mongolia. You've been looking for him for quite some time. You want to bring him to trial, then bring him back here, and he'll stand trial. And if he is innocent, then we can still use him as an atomic expert. And so that is going to be the task of Major Talbot as he goes to Mongolia, and he is going to find Bruce Banner being held captive here. Meanwhile, we see that there are some more enemies that are against Ganga Khan, and they want to invade his territory. And so while that is taking place, we see Major Talbot is going, 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 going to go to the room where Bruce Banner is at. He then rejoins Bruce Banner, says to Bruce, look, I know that you're a traitor, and it looks like you needed to call Uncle Sammy for help. And Bruce says, Talbot, were you born a knothead, or do you have to work at it? Well, then we see the enemies at Ganga Khan are going to fire upon his men here, and so there's an invasion that takes place here, but they are outnumbered. This confusion gives Bruce Banner and Major Talbot time to run away behind the curtain, and they uh, fight and take out this one guy who, who was the guard, and he's like, stay back. There must be others behind the next ledge. We'll have to find another way to descend. I warned you not to rush out so fast. They know this terrain. We don't. Look, Banner, I'm a soldier. I'm ready to give my life for the country I serve, for the land I love. You wouldn't understand that, but all of a sudden we see the ledge that they're standing on begins to crumble beneath them, and it looks like they are falling to their deaths, and that is where we're going to leave off here. Will Bruce Banner and Major Talbot be able to survive this fall, this major fall that's been taking place? We're going to find all this out in issue number 68. As we continue this story, and I hope to see y'all there. Well, we'll definitely find out what happens next to the lives of both Bruce Banner and Major Talbot. And coming up next issue, we see that Steve Ditko is going to leave Tales to Astonish, and Jack Kirby is coming back, and he's going to be doing the penciling for issue number 68. So we'll definitely look forward to looking at um, his artwork. I definitely really enjoy Steve Ditko's version of the Hulk, and so sad to see him leave this title, but I also like Jack Kirby's version as well, and so we'll be looking forward to that when we look at issue number 68. Go ahead now, drop a like on this video, comment down below what you liked about this issue, and I will see y'all in the next one.